Joining me now to discuss the ongoing fight against the coronavirus and the prospect of a safe and effective vaccine is Dr. Dean Finelli, a pharmaceutical expert and the partner of the intellectual property of SafeWorth and Shaw. So, Doctor, it's a real pleasure having you on the program tonight because it's a lot of moving parts when it comes to something that's been highly anticipated for almost a year now. So when we talk about the idea of a vaccine that's right now being tested by some of these pharmaceutical companies having a 95 percent effectiveness rating, what does that mean for the prospect of it being released to the public? Well, it's good to join you. Certainly, that's very promising initial data. And when you think about it, over the summer, the Food and Drug Administration put out guidelines where they were looking for at least 50 percent efficacy. Now, to hear that Pfizer hit 95 percent and Moderna hit just under 95 percent is very promising. So uh, things look very favorable. These Both of these companies will likely submit for emergency use authorization shortly. So we should see a vaccine ideally before the end of this year. And I think it's even more promising that we're seeing successes on multiple fronts by different companies. The idea that there's not just one that might have something. It seems like all these companies are pretty confident in their products, whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, whoever it may be. So how does that work moving forward? Do they go straight to market? Do they have to give it to the government first and let them distribute it first? How does that distribution look like? Yeah, because we're in a pandemic situation, uh, through Operation Warp Speed, a lot of the logistics have been in the works for quite some time now. And the deployment of this will be facilitated by the federal government through H the Health and Human Services, the Pentagon, as well as the CDC. It will be uh, coordinated with the local public health organizations and the local CDC jurisdictions. And then from there, they'll get it out to individuals in the local community. So this will be unlike uh, your typical situation where, for example, you have the flu that's administered. And especially when you think about uh, the logistics of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have to be kept very cold. And also, uh, they're both two shot vaccines. So making sure that whoever gets that first shot, they come back at the appropriate time, whether it's 21 days or 28 days later to get that second shot. So they have that maximum uh, efficacy and immunity. And we mentioned that this was an expedited process, uh, taking almost a year for it to, to get to the point where we are right now. But I was reading, for example, earlier today that there are some cooling companies that create containers that are saying, you know, we might not have enough uh, right now to store some of these vaccines. Uh, that was over in Germany. But then here in the United States, there's still some questions as well as to if other parts of the supply chain could keep up with Operation Warp Speed. Uh, do you have any concerns about other things outside of the vaccine that may be a hurdle in this process? Yeah, that's a good point. And when you think about this through Operation Warp Speed, not only has it facilitated the unprecedented uh, speed at which the vaccine's been developed, but also behind the scenes, you've had the coordination with you know things we take for granted, like the syringes, the needles, the vials that these are stored in. So that's all been coordinated well in advance over the summer. So I'm not too concerned. Certainly it's a logistical challenge, but it looks like this the plans have been in the works, so we should be able to meet those plans. Yeah, and, you know, I think to the beginning of the pandemic, too, for example, when there weren't enough nasal uh, swabs or there weren't enough masks. And I know that the private public partnership really did a lot to make sure that those did come out a little bit quicker. The production really ramped up the same thing with testing as well. Uh, so I am confident on that front as well. But when we look at what's happening right now, the point that we stand as of today, when do you think that we will realistically see this vaccine be made on a wider left level where people can start at least looking forward to returning to normal, as people are putting it? Yeah, we're all looking forward to that time. And, you know, Pfizer, they said they should submit their emergency use authorization within the next few days. Mm. Uh, Moderna should shortly follow. So we should see vaccines starting to come onto the market for those high risk individuals by the end of this year, early January. But for the general public, realistically, we're talking probably, you know, sometime Q2 of 2021. And ideally, if things continue to move in the positive way that they have moved, you know, maybe by the end of next summer, we should start be getting to a state where we're getting back to normal. And I know for a lot of people, they want it as soon as possible. But I mean, to even recognize the fact of how quick this has gone, it's really a miracle. I mean, we're going to be dealing with have a vaccine, hopefully within the next year, that is addressing a problem that is once in a generation. And for the way that the American people and pharmaceutical companies have responded to, I mean, it's really something to be said about that within itself. But Dr. Dean Finelli, I really appreciate you coming on the program tonight, breaking down how that rollout will look like. Thank you. My pleasure.